Let's play Make Tracks by Williams, a 1981 game that was distributed by Williams in the United States of America, but it's actually a Japanese game made by a company called Alpha Dinchi, and kind of strange name. That company went on to work for SNK, uh, which was an arcade game developer much later. And so they had a very humble beginning. And this game right here was called Crush Roller um, in, in other parts of the world. But it was called Make Tracks right here in the good old U.S. of A. This is an example of one from Galloping Ghost. You can see the side art. It's a little fuzzy. Um, and you can make out the control panel. It's a colorful cabinet. Um, I liked it. I thought it was, a, it was a very attractive game. I played the game as an alternative to Pac-Man. Here's an example of one that has been used and abused over the years. Let's go back and forth a couple of times. Here's the original, and here's what someone had done to it. I, I assume they, they made it into another game. Here it says Altered Beast at the top. Altered Beast came out much later, a different control panel, but reusing and recycling the cabinet. Interesting here on the cabinet, and it looks like somebody has done some work to this cabinet to get some of the old paint off to see what it was originally underneath. Um, but it looks like on the side there's this interesting like three pieces of side metal trim. I, I don't know what that's for. I guess they did, they kind of separated some colors there. It looks like they used some lick and stick colored material. I have no idea. But um, that altered beast bar key at the top. There were many games um, in the arcades. This is whenever I knew arcades were kind of turning ick. Is whenever we started to see conversion games end up in arcades. And, and, and their, the cabinets were no longer attractive or there was just something gross about it as a young kid seeing, say, a Tron cabinet or any Nintendo cabinet. And it's been painted over and it's a new game and it has some crap marquee at the top. That was a terrible idea. Whoever in some corporation thought that was a good idea, stupid. Here we see a lineup of games. There's Make Tracks is to the left. And this looks just like... A super auction to me um, stickers on the marquees and, um, and and these games would be for sale you'd go and bid on them those are, actually brings back some pretty good memories even though I didn't buy too many art I guess I did buy quite a few arcade games over the years I don't know but anyway they were fun they were a lot of fun here we see a make tracks cocktail table and it has a nice cutout there for the control panel I actually like this cocktail table and that's rare for me to say. Uh, I don't know if the artwork on the right and left of that monitor is correct because there's this image and that looks a little bit more like what might have been done during this era. But regardless, I really like the cabinet cutout. It feels like Williams might have done that. Um, it makes sense to have a cutout like that. And anyway, I, I just think this is a pretty, pretty decent cocktail table. Rare for me to say, like I, I mentioned. Here we see the flyer. Uh, full size make tracks, very colorful game. We see the mini, um, which is a we also call those cabarets, and I've not seen any of those ever in my life. Uh, but I love them. I love mini games. I love cabarets. Great for collectors. Um, and then we see the cocktail table. So um, last note here is Crush Roller. So Crush Roller was what it was called elsewhere in the world, and here is a Crush Roller cabinet. And I believe that is absolutely legit. Um, it looks like some other photos that weren't as good as this one. And so I assume that this is Crush Roller. Same game. Exactly the same. So let's get into the game. Um, and then when we get done, I'm going to talk to you about, if you hang on to the end, we'll talk a little, little bit about this eBay and a Facebook Marketplace ad. Just as a, a snapshot of what's going on in time for the market in July 23 when I shot this video okay so it may not upload on July 23 but that's when I shot it let's get into the game so crush roller we've seen a name that came up there just for a second called it looks like it's called Carl Samno electric limited there it is it's a Japanese company so that was published by this company but made by Alpha Denshi. So I assume that Alpha Denshi sold it to Carl Somno Electric, who then licensed it to Exidy in Europe and, of course, Williams throughout um, the USA 
and maybe Canada and other places. All right, so what do you got to do? This is a strange freaking game. And I liked it, again, because it was something I could play for a little while. So it looks like we have a cat in the lower left that does nothing. We have another cat. There must be a fascination with these cats. Um, you can see that you are you are this little... It's not really a roller. I just got to pause this. It's so strange. Um, the little footprints on the left, they're little footprints. Strange, because the footprints are just... They can be either on your paint job, which is what's on the right-hand side and is green, or they can just be... I don't know, on concrete, hard to, hard to understand the point, uh, except that they're little bitty bits that you have to go back and clean up. So I feel like what you are is a mop. That's what it looks like to be a mop. The only thing that is, is kind of like a roller is the thing that the mop is on right now. So I'll unpause. Okay, so he looks like a mop. He just took out whatever that thing was. It could have been uh, maybe a cat, I guess. It looks kind of like a flattened cat. Um, but the mop can just take out the cat. No problem. You don't need anything at all. But there behind you appears to be fish. Now, how fish are outside of the water and, and you know, doing their, this, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know where, where that comes from. Regardless, the mop guy, you, hath, you have to, to use this crush roller right now. So it goes back, boom, crushes the thing, flattens it boom and it leaves like a little white ghosty thing that's squirming and that pretty much completes everything watch it do it again and you see that the points go up so from 50 to 100 now 200 400 and as many times as you want to wipe those guys out you can now back to this though there's cats there's a couple of cats showing they again they're just decorative um, i'm not too sure what's on the middle right pretty close to where the mop is now i guess that's a mouse coming out of a hole we have a car, and we have a tree with a bird in it up there. And then there's something kind of strange to the upper right, and it just looks like something walking around, like little footprints there. I don't know what that is. And it just walks around in a circle or a square. Okay, I'm going to try to beat my last score, 65-10. I'm dab. I'm not really dab. I just throw whatever in. Let's play this game by Carl Samno. Mont, one of the most annoying intro tunes I've ever heard in, in any arcade game. It's very, very loud in the simulator. So I'm going to try to keep it minimized. Okay, there you go. You're painting away with your mop. Whoops. Okay, already screwed up. What I was trying to show you is where the little fishies come out there. And they're not little fishies. They're as big as your mop. I swear it's a mop. I'm going to call it a mop. So you just need to stare away from that little area. But that's their spawning area. Now, um, <laughs> I am looking at three other things right now. No excuse. But you could point is, at least you can you can hear that intro music every time. Now, while the game is just chilling, this background music is mellow. I don't mind it a bit. While you're painting, it's it's like an out of tune sound. It doesn't follow the background music at all. And I don't know if that's an appealing sound but the, the, the developer came up with. But anyway, let's crunch this guy. And I didn't do it there either. So this looks like the worst fail in all arcade history. But I'm going to tell you right now it's not because I'm going to kill it right now with a seriously focused strategy. Paint. And I get tied up in a corner. You can get tied up in a corner a little bit, but... Um, e even so, the game is very smooth um, flowing. So in some maze-like games like Ladybug where it's not smooth at all, this one is very smooth. Now I'll show you a little spot here where you can get into trouble if I can create one. Um, I probably, no I can't right there. I need an intersection. It's possible to leave a little paint in an intersection and, and then have a hard time seeing it later. And I'm going to try to show you that here in just a moment. I'm going to wipe these guys out. Um, now, let's see if it's possible. I'm going to go up and stop and then pull off. Now, do you see that little corner I left out there? That's going to be problematic later. Let's say that to the end and see if that's going to be a problem. Okay, now I got this thing, a cat, I'm supposing. Definitely want to get the cat. Smash it. Crush it. Because it's worth a few points. 
they're gonna gang up on me here unless I make a maneuver like this. I'm going for the roller. Boom. Let's see if I can mop this guy here. Oh yeah. And I don't know, I think I can mop him one more time without too much pain, but I'm not for certain there. Oh, see, I could have left that one. You gotta watch these intersections. It's possible to get in trouble there. Okay, there's 800. I really want this one for 16. Oh, he's too smart. He's gonna run away. And they will catch you. They, they will get just enough away that you can't get you can't get them. Okay, now my suspicion is I'll do this. Yep, see, I still got one more spot to get. And it, it can really take some time to figure it out. And I knew I left it there on the corner on purpose. But I think that's kind of a issue because whenever you're a, a kid and you're playing the game, anybody playing the game, you're not really thinking about that particular spot there. And, um, you know, it, it's kind of hard to, to make out and see. Yeah, I just want to paint right in front of their little spawning area. See, I had to go kind of wipe over that a little extra to make sure I got it. I think, that, again, another problem here is whenever you play this, you tend to, you can stop completely. And it's kind of nice whenever you're trying to get a little strategy, strategy, strategy together. Now, I think, yeah, they're pretty smart here. They're going to try to avoid me. And uh, the timing is, is such that they're slick. See that? Lame. Um, they're going to catch me if I, oh, I, I thought I could get to a tunnel where I might be able to get a little bit of an increase. Those look like mouse prints, don't they? I don't think they're cat prints. There we go. Come here, you little sucker. Man, I'm just going to catch him right. Whoop. This dude, he's going to try to get me distracted where I'm not paying attention and the stinking fish are going to get me. But no problem here. I'll just do this. Uh, they're going to try to get me cornered, jerks. Um, Non-player character intelligence gets better right there on level two. Okay, come back out, you little sucker. I'm going to die if I go that way. So I'll go this way. So I'm going to let it cruise around for a while. I really would like to have it for a cool thousand points. Um, man. Come on. Get that. Well, everybody's avoid me. Got at least one for a cool 100. Ah, oh, that stupid thing. How come I can't get the mouse? It's going to distract me and I'm going to get eaten by a fish. <laughs> yeah, not going to take the bait, bud. Yeah, I feel like I've not... I can't recall a time where I've had something walking around this long. Um, and I think it's actually gone. And they're going to get me now. Yeah, I knew it was coming. So I think at 10,000 I would have ended up with a free mop but oh shoot I want to actually put some initials up this time uh, a free mop but I didn't get it so I, I find the game fun um, I, I, I find this music is very annoying and the game is fairly simple but mechanically game mechanics wise it's a game that is simple to play but hard to master you know and I think it's just got enough fun factor to it that I keep playing it I don't get into a, a period where I'll play this game eight or nine or 12 times in a row like I will some games like a, a Mr. Do game. Um, but I will jump in and I'll play it for a few minutes and try to come up with some, you know, little slick strategy to, to I don't know, 10 grand is, is kind of my goal there. Uh, let's go out here. Before I talk about that, thanks for hanging on for that if you want to see. But if I take a look here in LaunchBox, high score wise, Always curious. Doesn't like doesn't look like there's a lot of activity, um, at least for people who are using this interface. But the highest score for for good here is thirty nine thousand, which is really seems to me a rather high score. Somebody named Crush Roller here has twenty five thousand points, which is Crush Roller being the European name for it and the Japanese name for it. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, they must be a super fan of twenty five thousand is not a 
a super high score. The high score, what is the record for this game? Um, I don't know. Let's put world record, huh? I'm looking it up off to the side, and it looks like, dude, I don't, I just don't see it. I don't see a score. Oh, here I do. I do see one. Um, and this says arcade emulated MAME at highscore.com, 110,000. Wow, man, that's that's pretty high. That's really high. Okay, thanks for hanging on. Let's take a look here at a couple of ads that are up. Now, it's just kind of fun to do. And for kicks, I wanted to go and take a look at this listing or see if there was any listings. And here is a make tracks. And you can see the cabinet side on the right is beat up a little bit. Um, control panel looks pretty good. Um, looks like the... Looks like it could be a, could have even been cleaned a little bit. It needed to be cleaned a little bit because it's kind of dusty up there. Not not a good good thing if you're trying to make some dough on these. I don't know what's coming out of the coin door at the top. It looks like a wire at the bottom coin door. That's where you do all the coin scoop, right? You could have a different key for that. You could have the upper key for coin jams. Uh, that was a nice convenient thing for arcade people. That way you didn't have to worry about anybody stealing money. Different key on the bottom is on the top point is the bottom coin door is smashed in pretty dirty at the bottom let's check out this photo here this is the left side we're looking at pretty worn there although that control panel still looks good so that might have been replaced um, last photo is a dead-on photo and I don't think we see any photos of the screen so not not really an attractive listing and this, the price at $38.79, $3,879 with free shipping is terrible. I think this is a terrible, terrible thing. But it's the only thing listed right now on eBay. So how else might you buy? Well, if it was me, I would go to Facebook Marketplace, which I did here. And I just looked and seen what was within like a 300-mile radius. And I found this one in Ellisville, Missouri, $850.00. And it's fully working 80 hours a day with no issues. Can view any time during hours of operation at West County Lanes. Only an appointment is needed for purchase at advertised price. So $850. Now let's do a kind of a comparison. The other one had some, you know, some pretty rough looking stuff here on the side of the cabinet. So when I look at this side, it looks way better than the previous one. The environment it's in looks very nice. It looks like a nice bowling alley. Left side looks good. It doesn't look as worn as the other one, in my quick opinion. Um, it looks like our marquee is nice and clean. We do see the control panel looks pretty darn good, and the screen is clear. So having just seen this and, and, and me going back into playing games, arcade games again, um, just to kind of do this particular playlist for anybody that wants to see it, I'm starting to get myself wound up thinking how cool it would be to own a couple of these. Compared to pinball machines, if you could buy these for, say, $600 to $1,000, you could truly populate an arcade, like a, a pay-for-two-hour arcade um, that, that, that's starting to grow so much around the United States anyways, and you could save tremendous amounts of money by doing that and just having a few pinball. As much as I love pinball, it's just insanely expensive. But um, anyway, I, I, I don't know. It's an idea. I kind of want to jump in on this. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make tracks today. Download emulators. Play the game. Beat my scores. Um, and make some tracks.